newspaper reporter on the street corner stopping people, asking them if when they died and they're in their casket at the funeral home, what one thing would they like to hear people say as they come by? The first man said, I hope they'll come by and say that I was a good husband, a good dad, and a good granddaddy. The second man said, I'm a doctor. And I hope I've done great work, helped others, is what they will say. The third man, when they come by, what would you like to hear him say? He said, oh look, he's moving. <laughs> <laughs> Missy, I'll tell that to Dr. Watson. Psalms chapter one, all five verses, all six verses. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, who standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorner. But his delight is the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall 
should all be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, how y'all doing this morning? Doing well. Good. How are you, North Sioux? Did you get wet walking over here? Not only did you have an umbrella, you had a man to carry it for you, didn't you? I don't see how it gets much better than that. Uh, Patty grabs our umbrella and runs. Like, if you want to go with me, you better come on. <laughs> Okay, we've got a lot of things to talk about. We've got a lot to do here. Uh, first thing, and this is, I want you to think about this seriously. We have been talking about, and we've talked about this several times in here, about how sometimes we have problems hearing each other. Uh, you know, when people pray, we can't always hear them. When people are in the back talking, the front can't hear them, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, we'll deal with it. But what I want you to think about is we're beginning to look at some, we're beginning to try to look at some ideas that'll help us with that problem, okay? Now, first of all, we're gonna be, and I'll talk to y'all about this before, we're gonna begin to use a microphone in here a little bit. Now, look here. This microphone, do not let it become a distraction from what we're doing, okay? For example, if this microphone starts in your direction, don't go, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. Okay, just lay it down somewhere out of the way. Uh, don't let it be a distraction. Now, uh, and this is something that we need to pray about. We need to think about this. Uh, like I say, we're beginning to look for some ideas and things that we can do. And you all need to begin to pray about this. And we need to, and not like, you know, go and pray this afternoon and forget about it. We need to pray about this. And what we need to pray for is for God to show us what to do. Okay? What we're, the answers that we're looking for and the prayer that we're going to have is, God, show me what to do here. So that when the time comes, we'll know what we need to do about it. Okay? We'll work our way through that. Um, next thing. Let me think here just a minute. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh! In the, the 25th of July, the last week of July, is that right, Craig? 25th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, through there, they're having the fair over at Dublin. It's a little county fair. I'm sure some of you all have been over there. We went over last year and handed out Bible tracts. Now, what we're going to do, our street ministry, what they're going to do is they're going back over there this year. I don't think they decided exactly which day. On Saturday, it runs from two o'clock till quick time, 10 o'clock, which would be the last day. Of the evening during the week, it starts at five and ends at 10 or 10.30, something like that. And we're gonna go. Now, what we did last year, we went over there, me and Craig and Rodney went over there. And this is, this is not the West Virginia State Fair. This is a small county fair. Um, we walked through, handing out Bible tracts, Took us 45 minutes or something to completely walk the grounds and hand them out to get to the place where you're saying, would you like one of these? And they're saying, I've already got one, right? So the point of all this is, you gotta think about it more. Uh, I mean, this is a fair, you know? We're talking elephant ears, we're talking gyros, the whole <laughs> bank, Ferris wheel, you know? If you wanted to go, and if you had kids that want to go, I suppose, you know, uh, there's a possibility that we could use the church bus if we need it. But think about it. You know, we don't have a definite day and we don't have a definite time, but they'll get that together. Maybe we'll have that by next Sunday. It's big fun. It's in Dublin right there. You're on where the fairgrounds are as you go into Dublin. And the Bible tracks, this is not a place really where you hold signs. This is handing out Bible tracks like it. It doesn't take very long. And once you get it done, then we've got the fair to participate in. Okay? All right, anybody else? Anybody got anything before we start? Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We praise you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace and everything that you've done for us. Just pray that the Holy Spirit would lead us. Show us what to do. Help us with this sound system thing that we're talking about. Show us what to do there. Just guide us through it. Help us with our lesson this morning to learn come closer to you and we thank you for everything that you've given us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, take your Bible story to the book of 2 Samuel. We are in 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9. And look at verse number 8. 
2 Samuel chapter 9 and verse number 8. All right, would you stand, please? Now, as you read this, this is Mephibosheth is who's talking here, and he is talking to David, okay? Let's read this together. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Okay? Now see, what we're going to talk about this morning is Mephibosheth, okay? Uh, Lynn, can you say Mephibosheth? Not very well. <laughs> okay. Right. So saying it three times in a row would be reasonably difficult. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and I worked on this all week, and I just barely got it. So when I mess this up, don't think too much of it. Uh, what we want to think about here for just a minute, and we talked about this in here before, and we talked about it several times. We want to talk about the grace of God. Okay. That's something that that should be on our minds all the time grace of God. And what we have to understand about it is, first of all, we can't earn it. Second of all, we don't deserve it. Third, there is no way that we can repay it. All right? Now, when you take all that into consideration and you stop and think about this, this is a true, complete, simple gift from God. The grace of God. This is the grace that saved me. This is the grace that's going to get me into heaven. Okay? That's what we're talking about. Now, this story that we're getting ready to look at here is one of the best examples of the grace of God in the entire Bible. That's what this is about. The pure grace of God. And we're going to see what David did with this. Now, when we talk about this grace and we think about it, as we look at this, what we need to understand for just a minute. You remember, uh, I guess it's been a couple weeks ago now, we were talking about Hannah and Hannah's prayer and Hannah's prophecy. And we talked about the fact that when we looked at that, when we looked at what she said and what she talked about, we were looking at Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. And that was 3,000 years ago, okay? The same Christ, the same salvation, the same grace that she was talking about is the same thing that we work with now, all right? Here is another example of the same thing, okay? This is, this is the Holy Spirit leading us to Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, all right? That's what we want to think about as we go into this. Now, this grace, and we need to understand, the, the grace and the message that we're talking about here is when Paul... Jesus, um, John, Barnabas, when these people went into the synagogues and taught and preached, these are the scriptures that they were using, all right? They were leading people to the Lord through Old Testament scriptures, just like the one that we're talking about today, okay? We need to keep that in mind. Here is another example of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, all right? Okay, now, think about this for just a minute. Uh, when this starts, look at verse number, chapter 9, look at verse number 1. Verse number 1 says, And David said, Is there yet any that is left in the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? All right. What happens here is, the Holy Spirit, now see, David had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, just like you and I did. He had it from the time he was anointed by Samuel. Right? The Holy Spirit is convicting David right here to go and find somebody who is a son of John okay? because of the covenant they had. Now because of this conviction, because of what happens right here, the Holy Spirit leads David through this whole series of events. So future generations, which means you and I, we'll be able to look at this and see Christ in the Old Testament. The parallels here between what happens here and our salvation are really, you'll see, they're really plain. I mean, it's not hard to see at all. All right, so look at, in verse number one, it said, and David said, is there yet any that is left in the house of Saul 
that I may show him kindness. See that? Show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. This kindness is grace. That's what he's getting ready to show in Mephibosheth. He is this grace. Look at verse number three. And the king said, Is there not yet any in the house of Saul that I may show him the kindness of God unto him? The kindness of God. This is the grace of God. That's what we're talking about. This is the same grace that I got saved by. That's what we're talking about right here. Now look at verse number seven. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. Here is that grace again. Now, watch this. Here is a prime example. And what we're talking about here is someone receiving the grace of God because of something that someone else did for them. Okay? This is not about Mephibosheth. This is about Jonathan. Right? The reason that Mephibosheth is going to receive what he receives is because of the covenant David had with Jonathan. Okay? You see where he talks about going back and looking for someone for Jonathan's sake. Okay? All right. We have so far. Mike, we good? Okay. Now, let's talk about Mephibosheth for just a minute. Mike, you want to try to say that? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm pretty proud of myself for making us do that, to be able to, to say that. All right, anyhow, Mephibosheth, let's talk about who he is. All right? Mephibosheth is Jonathan's son. All right? Mephibosheth's crippled. Okay? He's a grown man. When we're talking about him here, he's a grown man. Now, what happened to Mephibosheth is when he and it's in 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse number 4, what happened is when Saul and Jonathan were killed in battle, remember that? Saul and Jonathan were killed in battle. All right, Mephibosheth had a nurse, nanny, whatever you want to call it. When she found out what had happened to Saul and Jonathan, she grabs this child up, and at the time he was five years old. She basically grabs him up and starts running. She is fleeing for her life and for the life of the child. Bless her heart. She drops him. I mean, that's it. She's running. She drops him. Okay? And because of that, he is crippled for the rest of his life. Whatever happened when she dropped him caused him to be crippled. The Bible says he's laying in his feet. Okay? Now, Mephibosheth lives in Lodabar. Okay? Lodabar. Now, if you start to do Bible definitions and you begin to think about this and you start looking, Lodabar means no pasture. That's what you come up with. But what this leads to is Lodabar is in the middle of nowhere. Okay? This is where, it's out in the middle of the desert, and basically this is where people end up, where they have no place else to go. They end up in Lodabar. Okay? This is where Mephibosheth is. <coughs> Excuse me. This is where Mephibosheth is. And he's living with another family, right? He has no home, he has no money. He's basically there because that's where he has to be. He's crippled, he needs somebody to look after him. So he's out there in the middle of nowhere living with his family. And that's what he's got to go on, okay? So, next thing, and we need to remember this. When two kings fight, all right? This king and this king, all right? The king that wins kills the king that did it, okay? And what's normal practice is that not only does the king that wins kills the king that didn't win, he kills his family, he kills his servants, he kills anybody that has anything to do with it. And this was an accepted practice. That's what they did. So that the people of the king that lost won't be planning insurrection and all that freaking world. Okay? So David could have killed a feet yet, and nobody would have thought twice about it. Alright? So that's where we are. Okay? The Holy Spirit convicts David to go get this guy, to find him, which he does, and to go get him. Okay? Now, I want you to take a look at what Mephibosheth says when he comes to the palace. Okay? Look up in verse number 8. This is our memory verse. Now, remember, Mephibosheth still doesn't really understand everything that's going on. Okay? He goes, David brings him into the palace explains to him what's getting ready to happen. And what is getting ready to happen is 
David is going to bring him into the palace and he will eat at the king's table from that point forward. That's what's getting ready to happen. Now Mephibosheth, look what he said. Verse number eight. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? This is how Mephibosheth looks at himself. Such a dead dog as I am. Okay? Now, now remember this. When David looks at Mephibosheth, he doesn't see a poor crippled man. Okay? What David sees is his love for Jonathan, the covenant he had with Jonathan, his friendship with Jonathan. That's what he sees when he looks at Mephibosheth. Okay? But Mephibosheth says, dead dog, look at the dead dog that I am. Okay? <coughs> All right, here we go. Now, here's what I want you to, here's what I want, here's what I'm asking you, what I want you to think about. Before you were saved, okay, before you got saved, and God looked at you, okay, what did he see? Okay, you with me? Got it? Okay, what did he see? When God looked at you before you were saved, and he looked down at you standing here on earth, what did he see? Yeah. What? Yeah. George, that's you back there? Yeah. Oh, I, I got you. Okay. Yeah, okay. You Say it again. Sinner. Okay, he saw a sinner. Is that it? Come on, Jesse. Is that it? His child, though. What? It's his child. Okay. All right, what? His creation. His creation. Okay. Come on, man. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm talking about lost people. When God wanted to look. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. I tell you what let's do. Let's look at some Bible verses here, right quick. Take your Bible. Look at the Book of Ephesians. <clears throat> Turn right quick to the Book of Ephesians, <clears throat> chapter number two. Book of Ephesians, chapter number two, and verse number one. Chapter number two and verse number one. Now this says, now watch this. It says, and you had he quickened, okay? You had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, okay? Dead in trespasses and sin. Remember the dead dog, right? You were dead in trespasses and sin. Turn over to chapter five. Turn over to chapter five. Look at verse number 14. Chapter 5, verse number 14. It says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee life. Okay? Arise from the dead. Awake thou that sleepest. Now go over to the book of Colossians. To the book of Colossians, chapter number 2. Look at verse number 13. Okay? Chapter 2, verse number 13. Andy, would you read that, please? And you dead in sins and the circumcision is a sin of worship. Okay. Is it working? Now it is. Kind of. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Okay, thank you. All right, turn to Romans, back to the book of Romans. Look at verse number 7. Verse number 7. I'm sorry, chapter number 7. Verse number 18. Chapter 7, verse number 18. It says, For I know that in me, my flesh, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. All right, look here. When God looked at me before I got saved, he saw a person who was spiritually dead in their sins and in whose flesh there was no good thing. That's what he saw. That's what that says. Okay? Spiritually dead in my sins and in my flesh there was no good thing. So now we go back to this dead dog that the fish is talking about. 
talking about and we begin to get in that ballpark, right? Okay? All right, now, Craig, <laughs> since that time, and I've got saved, I have been quickened, right? That's what that says. God quickened me. God quickened you, okay? Now, Craig, when God looks at me now, what does he see? What? Your sins are covered by the blood. So what's he see? Yeah, my sins are covered by the blood. He sees what? Christ's work. Right, okay. The work of Christ. Help him here, Jesse. Sinners saved by grace. Thank you. Sinners saved by grace. Okay. Now, but what does he actually see? Does he see my sin? No. Uh, what's he see? His blood. He sees the shed blood of Jesus Christ. When God looks at me now, he sees the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the righteousness of Jesus Christ because I have been quickened. Okay? No more dead in sin. No more uh, no more dead in sin and no more nothing good in the flesh. He sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Okay? We worked on that a little bit. Okay. Now, take your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians. Turn to 1 Corinthians. Look at chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians, chapter number 15. Verse number 10, Andy. Well, uh, got it? 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse number 10. All right, Andy, could you read that one? But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Stop, stop right there. Do you see, hear that? By the grace of God, I am what I am. Okay? I have been quickened. God sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ when he looks at me. Okay, Andy, go ahead. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. The grace of God. See, we're, it all comes back to the grace of God. All right, thank you, Andy. Okay, now, let's think about this just one minute. When, when David brought Mephibosheth into the palace, okay, he brought him in because of the covenant, okay, because of the covenant that he had with John. All right, now, tell me about our covenant. We live under a covenant, right? We live under the new covenant. Right? All right? Mr. Baldwin, tell me about that. The new covenant. All right? Jeff, help him a little bit. Covenant with Christ. All right? It, yeah, now don't make this hard. This is not complicated. Okay? It's a covenant with Christ. Okay? What is our covenant with Christ? Uh, he died on the cross for our sins. He died on the cross for our sins. That's what's the rest of it. And because he died on the cross for our sins. Andy? I have to use this every time. No, no, you're fine. Um, we have eternal life. We have eternal life. Yeah, that's a covenant. It's a simple. The covenant is, if you look in the Bible, when you talk about John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. There's our covenant. That's it right there. If you look on that little piece of paper, there are several Bible verses that talk about the covenant that we have with Christ. Okay? We're struggling a little bit here, ain't we? Let's, uh, let's try something else. When, when Mephibosheth brought, when David brought Mephibosheth into the, into the palace, he brought him in, and what he said was, you will eat at the king's table as one of my sons. Okay? That's what he told him. Okay. Now, how many of you believe and say, I believe that there is a table in heaven that I will eat at? Whoa. I, Mike, why do you believe that? I believe Good, good. You got the, you got the verse for that. That's that's chapter and verse. You're right. You know what it is? 
He says he will prepare a table. Okay, good, good. Now, let's think about this for just a minute. When Mephibosheth went in and sat down at David's table, I want you to think about David's table, okay? And what I want you to think about is who was sitting there, okay? When they went in and sat down, this is in the palace. We're not talking about the kitchen table here, okay? We're talking about the king's table in the palace. Now, if you think about that for a minute, David sitting there, okay? Now, David was a David was a warrior, okay? David was a mighty man of valor, right? David knew what it meant to have to fight to survive, okay? And David surrounded himself with mighty men of valor. These were men that fought with him, that went to war with him, that had friends that died with him, okay? They're sitting there at this table. Then you've got David's family. David had uh, several wives. He had children, Absalom, Tamar. And you stop and think about who's sitting there at this table, okay? All right? And then there sits Mephibosheth. All right? Now think about that for a minute. Now remember, when David looked at Mephibosheth, he didn't see, he did not see a crippled man. He saw Jonathan's son, the love he had for Jonathan, the friendship he had for Jonathan. Okay? Now remember that. All right? Now, Mike, this table that you're talking about, I need to speak up. This table that you're talking about, me and you are going to be sitting there. Is that what you're saying? Okay. All right. Okay. Who else is going to be there? Who else is going to be sitting there? Brenda going to be sitting there? Who else? Such as? Corey? Oh, Stay with me here, Mike. All right. Uh, Noah. <coughs> Do you think Noah will be sitting there? Abraham? Isaac? Jacob? Really? Oh, God. Okay. All right, think about that for a minute. Now think about that for a second. This table that he's talking about here. I'm not 100% sold on this, but, but still, with what he's talking about, and we think about the people that are there, think about us, turn to the book of Luke. Turn to the book of Luke, chapter 22. Book of Luke, chapter 22. And look at verse number, chapter 22, verse number 30. Luke, chapter 22, verse number 30. Got it? All right, now, when you look at this, one thing that we need to keep in mind here, this is Jesus Christ talking to his apostles. Okay? That's who he's talking to. Now, chapter 22, let me get on up. Verse number 30, it says, look at verse number 29. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, there's a table, and there's a table that's going to be in heaven. And that's Jesus Christ's table, and the apostles are going to be sitting there. Okay? Now, does that include me? I don't really know. I'm not sure that I'll be sitting at this table, okay? Because he was talking directly to the apostles. Okay? Now, so there is a table there. All right? Take your Bibles, turn to the book of Revelation. Turn to the book of Revelation. Chapter number 19. Revelation chapter 19, verse number 9. Chapter 19, verse number 9. It says, And he saith unto me, now this is the angel talking to John, and he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Now, this very supper of the Lamb that we're talking about here, I will be there. Okay? I'll be standing there. If you're sitting here this morning and you're saved, you will be standing there. Now, what I want you to think about for a minute is think about who else is going to be there. That's what we were talking about. Okay? Who else is going to be at this marriage supper of the Lamb besides me? And you start looking back through the Bible and you say, well, 
Abraham will be there, Noah will be there, Jacob will be there, Isaac will be there, and you start running down through those names, David will be there, okay? And then, there I stand, okay? Now think about that for a minute, all right? And what I have to remember and what I have to think about is when God looks at me, he doesn't see the dead dog, the cripple, the, the sinful flesh. He doesn't see anything that, like that. He sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Okay? I think that that's pretty amazing. You know, when we stop and think about this, you understand, and we've talked about this before, you understand that your eternal life has already started. Mm -hmm. You know that, right? Okay? We're going to live forever. There's no question about that. Now, we're going to change locations here one more time. But our eternal life has already started. And this marriage supper of the Lamb is something that is going to happen somewhere down the road. And I am going to be there. Right? Everybody good with that? Okay? And the reason I'm going to be there is because of the grace of God. It's all about the grace. Okay? All right. You know, I apologize. We struggled through that. And that's my fault. I got, I got sidetracked two or three times. It happens, you know. Miss Brawls, if you would say, hey, what are you doing? You know, all you got to do, and I'll try to get back on track. All right? Uh, okay. Next thing. Oh, you got any questions? Anybody? Everybody good? Okay. All right. No. Now, this is the easy one. When you leave this world, and you go to heaven, Okay? Now, and when we all go, the first person I want to see is Jesus. Okay? Then I begin to think about uh, my relatives, my family, my dad, my mother, my granddad, you know, your family. Okay? Now, you have to understand, we're going to be there forever. This is eternity. Okay? Well, once I get past that, okay? Christ, my family, aren't you ready? Who you want to see next? King David. No kidding. David. That was that's yeah, I'll go fast. North Sue. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. No. You know? And uh, I will also, and you begin to think about this, I would really be pretty anxious to see Adam. Alright? Alright, Pat. <laughs> Assuming that he is there, I think that would be. I think that would be interesting. You know, you, you really there are things there that we can't really imagine. We're talking about being there forever, and what we are going to spend our time doing is worshiping Jesus Christ while we're there. But it is really going to be interesting to see who that you will see walking around up there. Like you know, we'll be up there, and I'll say, I'll say, well, see, hey, how you doing? You know, we'll be there. We'll all be there. But you think about the people who are going to be there that you would really like to just, you know, just say, how you doing? Else. Well, I also like to talk to Eve. And I think the ladies in here would understand that part. Uh, <laughs> I've often thought that, that when you get to heaven, that there's going to be a big line of women standing in front of Eve, wherever she is, and that you will probably have to get in line when you get there. Okay? Will we know our, our family members and each other? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be known even as also we are known. There you go. Well, if we're going to know Moses and Abraham, we will know each other. But we won't have the same relationship like, right. like with my kid, like Billy. I know they're like, oh, that's my son in heaven. Like, I don't think no. we're going to have that. Yeah, no, what, what, you, what you're going to say is gonna there is the young man who was in it. I don't know if that memory will even be there. Oh, I do. I think it will. You will look at him as that was my son at one time. See, now help me here. <laughs> the Bible teaches, and here's, here's the way that I look at this. <clears throat> when I get to heaven, okay, Patty and I will know each other. I'll know who she was. I'll know she was my wife. You know, I have all that knowledge. But when I look at her, then I will not love her as I do now. It, it'll be a different. It'll be a different thing because I will love her 
and then I'll love Leroy. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> but really, no kidding, I'm serious. No kidding. I will love Leroy just as much as I love her. I'll love Billy just as much as you do once we are in heaven. I believe that's the way that works. It's a whole it's something that we can't really understand. It's a whole nother this is a whole nother thing. Because on the, where we are today, I don't have the ability, I ain't got it in me, to love somebody else as I love my wife. I just can't do it. But when we get to heaven, it'll be different. You want to <laughs> help you out? <laughs> now, actually, it's, there's a lot of things we don't know. Um, I think that we will have some memory because remember, once we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, we're still coming back to rule and reign with him for a thousand years. So there's going to be some memory of you know righteousness and things like that as we are ruling and reigning here on earth. Uh, but our memory will not be the same. We're not going to remember the heartaches and you know a lot of the other things that go with life. So it will be different. We just don't know to what extent, and that's why the Bible doesn't explain it because I don't think we could even really comprehend it anyway. Yes, ma'am. Well, we know each other as brother and sister. What do you mean by brother and sister? Well. Brother and sister in Christ. As opposed to being my earthly brother. Yes. Because when we get there, here we go again. Because when we get there, we will all be brothers and sisters in Christ when we get there. So, uh, I think so, yeah. However it happens, it will be good. It will be okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know. You're right. Oh, it'll be wonderful. Yeah, it's going to be. You know, I've heard uh, Billy Graham say it one time. If a golf course is what it takes to make you happy when you get to heaven, then there will be a golf course in heaven. Okay? Uh, you got to understand this judgment seat Christ thing. And the Bible talks about, you know, there will be at, at a certain time, as you go through the book of Revelations, it says, okay, now, now, there will be no more tears in heaven, right? Which leads you to the idea that before, there is a possibility that there may be some sad times there. What causes them, I don't know. And it will all be something that will make us better because of it. But, and I was listening to a guy this week who said, you know, judge the seat of Christ, I'm not really looking forward to that. That's not going to be, it. and I, it's not that I'm not looking forward to it, but I need to understand that's not all fun and games. That's right. Okay? Anything else? I would say what you just commented there about Billy Graham, um, if he said that, uh, the thing we need to realize, the things that please us here in this life, they're not going to be, I, I disagree with the fact there's going to be a golf course in heaven. I love golfing. But there's no joy if every time you hit the ball, it's a hole in one. So here, there's joy because of our sin nature, and we can we have competition. Yeah, and it's an earthly joy. Right. So it is a different. Uh, there will be a lot of joys in heaven, but it's not going to be the same type of joys that we have here. Yeah, I think I agree, and I think it's all it all goes back to in the book of Isaiah, where God tells us plainly, "My ways are not your ways; yeah. my thoughts are not your thoughts." You know, we simply do not have the capacity to understand, okay? Which is for our faith. That's why we need our faith, you know? Just like this marriage supper of Christ. You know, I have no, I, I can't imagine that. I don't know how that's going to work. Let me tell you this right quick, and we're going to quit. Uh, when Patty and I first started coming to church out here, this was several years ago, and we hadn't been there but like two or three times, and uh, John Offenberger was preaching, and we came in, so then we were looking for a church, and he did a sermon on the marriage supper of Christ, or the marriage supper of Christ, marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said, you know, we're all going to be there. It's going to be a wonderful time, and we'll all be praising the Lord, and everybody there is going to be eating Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> and I thought, where did they get this guy? <laughs> what in the world is he talking about? You know? So... And of course, we're not going to be eating Kentucky Fried Chicken, but still, it'll be Chick Fil A. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, you know, we don't mind. We, we just can't simply understand how wonderful those kind of things are going to be. Okay. All right, one more time. Uh, Ma'am, are you visiting? 
Okay, I'm sorry that I didn't. Oh, you're fine. Okay, what, do you mind if I ask what your name is? Is this your Is this your first time here? Good, good for you. Uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm sorry I didn't say something a few minutes ago. Oh, you're fine. We would love to have you back. Okay. Right. How's the microphone thing work? Yeah, I know. We're working on that. So let me ask you all. Could you hear her? Could you hear her better with that microphone? So that part of it actually worked. we got to get over that awkwardness. We'll get past that. Thank you for your help. Okay? All right, Craig. You want to pray? Memory verse. Whoa, whoa, stop. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Right quick. Memory verse for next week. We're going to start in our Sunday school books next week. Okay? Memory verse is Second Chronicles. Chapter 21, verse number 7. 2 Chronicles 21, verse number 7. You need to start reading it. 1 Kings chapter 12. 1 Kings chapter 12. Now there are some more verses there and we'll put them on Facebook. But that's your memory verse. Sunday school books. Okay? All right, Craig.